part one of this video we showed you how to repair the broken legs and foot of a chipmunk and to prepare that chipmunk so that it would fit naturally on stuff. In part two we showed you how to glue the block into place so that we'd have the wood in the right place to carve the legs and the feet. In part three, we discussed hand saws. In part four, I'm going to use wood putty to fill in the gaps around the legs, and I'm going to use a wood burner to texture the fur and put on a base coat of white paint. In part five, we will complete the painting of the chipmunks. Here I have glued the block in position with the arc curve to fit the side of the stone. And I've begun to rough carve the legs. The animal is turned over here showing the open space where we need some wood filler to fill the gaps. And this is how the block will be carved to fit against the stump. The two front feet will need to be somewhere along the curved arc so that the feet can contact the stump. I will use Mohawk Epoxy Putty Stick, Natural Maple. It's a two-part epoxy putty and it's easy to use and can be carved and painted. You cut off a small tootsie roll from the stick. The core of the stick is the putty and the outside is the hardener. You just knead the tootsie roll till it is the same color throughout. It helps if you keep your hands damp water while you're kneading it. That helps a lot because it's sticky if you don't. Once you start kneading, you have two minutes to mix it. Press into the holes or areas of repair and strike off any excess. It'll be hard within 20 minutes and dry enough to carve overnight. You can see where the putty has been applied to close all spaces between the two blocks. A little more rough carving and you can see the area where the legs and feet will be carved. Rubber bands are a handy way to clamp the chipmunk to the block. I can check out the fit of the feet to the block and look at the carving from all angles to be sure that the feet are going to be in position when they're carved. Once it's carved to satisfaction, I'll make arrangements to mount the chipmunk to the stump. If you want your finished carving to survive over time, it needs firm mounting. It needs to be strong. Only the small feet will contact the stump. And just putting a little glue there will not make a firm bond to the stump. So it needs to be pegged. Now I'm holding some bamboo skewers. Uh, these are ordinary skewers from uh, food, from takeout or from food that we've cooked in the kitchen. Bamboo is stronger than wood. It is uh, more flexible than wood. It makes super pins in very small sizes that will hold carvings together without breaking. We cut these things off to make little pins to hold the feet to the stump. To do that, I place the chipmunk in position it will be mounted, hold it with the rubber bands, and very carefully drill right through the foot and into the stump. You can see that it's frequently necessary to drill at an inconvenient angle. Here you can see the chipmunk temporarily pinned to the stump for test purposes. The chipmunk on top can be attached by pins in his hind feet that do not go all the way through. They'll be hidden when the mounting is complete. With pins in the foot, you can sit it on top of the stump and mark the positions for the holes to be drilled into the stump. Then you can test the fit. The pins have been glued into the feet of the chipmunk and wiped clean so that they'll glue up flush to the stump. Pins for the chipmunk on top have been glued into the stump. The chipmunk on the side has the pins glued into two feet. 
one of the hind feet will not have a pin, and one of the front feet will have a pin put in once the chipmunk is in final position. The angle of this pin makes it impossible to go into the hole if it's glued in position in advance. I carved off the exposed ends of the pins in the feet. A soft toothbrush is very handy to remove sawdust and shavings from small spaces. Timbermaid is one of my wood fillers of choice for small areas. It can be thinned with water and it's easy to carve. The top chipmunk is test fitted over the pins in the block and it can be removed for painting. Now I'm setting up the wood burner for texturing the fur. It's a good idea to practice on a test block of the same wood the carving's made from, to get used to the heat settings and to practice the strokes. I've painted a primer coat to the test block to see what the burn grooves look like after painting. This is a plastic reference animal to check the fur for texture comparison. The wood burning tip chosen for this texture needs to be sharpened on a stone just like a knife if you want a very fine texture for the fur. I've started to burn the texture of the fur. The lines need to follow the directions of the lay of the fur on the animal. The texture is easier to judge with the light striking from the side. We're looking for fine lines with depth. The dark color of the burns does not matter since it will be covered with paint. The top chipmunk is shown here with the texturing completed and ready for painting. Here's a good method for holding the chipmunk while painting all the sides and the top and the bottom. This is a stick with a cut off screw glued into the top, a painting stick. The chipmunks are ready for painting. I've started to apply the gesso. That's a matte, fluid, opaque base coat for colored paints. The chipmunks on the painted sticks are shown here. The sticks are mounted on a board with holes drilled in it. They are ready to be painted with colors now. Part 5 of this video will be the final painting of these chipmunks.